Do you know the world's most credible and amazing ghost photo may have been taken in the White House in 1950? Is the White House Phantom truly the world's most amazing ghost photo? I'm Joshua P. Warren, and I've traveled here to Washington, D.C. to solve the great mystery of this strange photograph. It's no secret that the White House is claimed to be haunted. Through the centuries, many presidents such as Thomas Jefferson, Andrew Jackson, and John Tyler have reportedly been seen. But the most prominent is said to be that of Abraham Lincoln. Even Winston Churchill once encountered the ghost of Abraham Lincoln in the White House. My name is Joshua P. Warren. I'm the author of many books on the paranormal, including Simon & Schuster's How to Hunt Ghosts. I once investigated a governor's haunted residence. However, when I wrote President Obama in 2012 asking to investigate the White House for a night, I never got a response. In fact, to date, the White House has never allowed a ghost researcher to investigate. I've been inside the White House, but since I can't investigate ghosts there, I'll have to use other methods of researching this photograph. From 1948 to 1952, U.S. President Harry Truman ordered a total reconstruction of the White House interior. The multi-million dollar project entailed a complete gutting of the collapsing building. To document this historic event, Truman chose the most esteemed photographer in the country, a 43-year-old National Park Service photographer named Abby Rowe. During World War II, Rowe had been handpicked by President Roosevelt to document the most dramatic and intimate inner workings of the war effort and the most important moments inside the White House. During his long uh, career, Rowe contributed some remarkable photographs. He was given an award by Johnson in 1966 uh, for his service, 25 years at that point. Technically, he, his, um, uh, he was an excellent photographer, and I think the, uh, the thing that's so impressive about Rowe was his broad range of uh, his, uh, his work. In fact, by the time of his death in 1967, Abbey Rowe had become the most trusted photographer for five presidents. Given his unprecedented access, it's understandable that Rowe, if anybody, would capture this extraordinary photo while documenting the White House reconstruction. Here you can see that Rowe set up his tripod on the rough holdout basement level of the White House. There is a bulldozer operator in the foreground and three men standing off to the left side in the background. But who is this strange translucent figure? off toward the right side by himself in the background. This photo was one of many printed in David McCullough's 1992 Pulitzer Prize winning biography called Truman. In 2008, an attentive reader named Bob Martin was the first to notice the weird figure and bring it to my attention. I contacted David McCullough through his agent to ask about the photo, but never received a reply. Is this truly the only clear, authentic photograph of a full-bodied apparition inside the White House? My first goal was to track down the original negative. The Truman Library in Kansas City said the negatives should be with the National Park Service. Park Service officials pointed me to a collection outside D.C. that most people never get to see, but I was granted access. I just visited the National Park Service Museum Resource Center in Landover, Maryland. It's a huge facility with millions of items of historic significance. It's not open to the public, so I had to make special arrangements to go inside and see part of their collection. They would not let me film inside, but what I can tell you is that they do have some Abbey Road prints, but they do not have the print that we are interested in and they don't have any of the Abbey Road negatives. So our quest to solve this mystery continues. I was next referred to the U.S. National Archives. There, I was told they do have some Abbey Road White House negatives at their College Park facility. However, these negatives are now restricted by the Secret Service. 
in 1978, President Jimmy Carter signed Executive Order 12065, designating much information relevant to the White House a national security risk. Despite my persistent formal requests, the Secret Service did not grant me access to the negatives. Though it would have been fascinating to examine the negative, it was not essential to do so in order to evaluate the picture. It is an official government photo and no one contests its authenticity. Some of the DC area's most experienced professional photographers have studios at the Torpedo Factory in Alexandria, Virginia. I decided to get some opinions there. So now we've been looking at this image uh, that Abby Roach took in 1950. Uh, would you say that's probably a medium or a large format camera? I would, say, I would say it's probably medium uh, format based upon the aspect ratio, uh, the width of the height of, of the image itself. Now when we compare um, our strange figure mm -hmm. to these other men, uh, yeah. how would you describe that comparison? Yeah, he's very fuzzy. I mean, today we would do this doing digital techniques and you can see through him. My inclination is to suspect that it was a long uh, shutter speed uh, as a result of very low ISO, very low sensitive uh, film, and that he stood there for like two or three seconds long enough to register on the film, but then moved quickly to one of the other places, either out of view or, or whatever. And so Hypothetically, if this were a picture of a ghost, right. Would there be any way to tell the difference? I have no idea. I have no. I, 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 I mean, no, no. If, if it were a ghost uh, or some sort of apparition, I have no idea. I mean, it would appear that you could see through it. Uh, but uh, I see. I, I don't know that. I, at least in my personal experience, yeah. I couldn't differentiate between the two. Yeah, based upon photographic technique alone, there's yeah. no way to tell the difference. There's no way to tell the difference. It could just be a pattern on the stone that we see and we recognize it as a human form. But in fact, it's just a pattern that, by a coincidence, happened to be there. Uh, a second possibility is it could be a long exposure, and you know this guy could have been there, sort of standing, and then he moved out of the frame. If it was a long enough exposure, uh, then you would uh, you wouldn't see him move, and you'd see his outline there. But then you would also see what was what was behind it. The ambient light inside seems pretty, pretty high, right? And so, you know, it doesn't seem dark in here. There's a lot of detail, and it, it almost looks like it's daylight in here. Hypothetically speaking, if this were a ghost, would there be any way that we could tell the difference between that and these other explanations? I don't think so. Analytically, but, though, we'll never know for sure. Probably never know for sure. Could this phantom simply be the accidental product of a long exposure? My co-producer, C. Eric Scott, is a film school graduate and professional photographer with 15 years of experience. We decided to do some tests under similar lighting conditions. If someone stands in front of the camera during a long exposure, then quickly moves away, can you create the same effect? We used a variety of exposure times and ISO settings. Despite hours of trying, we were never able to get a fully formed phantom with a clear distinct edge and a translucent body. Abby Rowe's exposure could not have been very long considering it was a construction work site and there was plenty of light available. With the, given the amount of light that uh, was being utilized in that photograph, I don't see how it could be a long exposure. An exposure long enough to possibly create this effect, allowing a person to stand for a bit, then run from the frame, would have likely washed out the entire background of the image. Yet the other people, elements, and lighting in the photograph look relatively normal. Even if someone could intentionally create this effect, it seems impossible to do so, matching the circumstances under which Abby Rowe took his photograph. In summary, where do we stand? We know this photograph is 100% legitimate. 
we know it was taken by one of the most credible and competent photographers in all of history. And we know for a fact it was taken inside the White House, one of the most important places in the world filled with drama and intense human energy. We know that based upon analyzing photographic technique alone, there is no way to determine conclusively why this figure is translucent. Therefore, that leaves us with the final stage in photo analysis. Let's simply take a good, plain look at what we see. The focal point of the image is the room itself. However, the bulldozer operator in the foreground is the primary human subject. He is looking straight at the camera and seems to have obviously posed for the image. In the background, the three men standing to the left appear to be in a rather relaxed state. Though aware of the camera, they may even feel they will not be in the photo since they are far off to the side of the clearing and positioned slightly behind a large vertical beam. But our ghostly figure is truly outstanding. He is apart from everyone else, and there is no indication that anyone else in the room is aware of him. He seems to be directly facing the camera, and is in fact lined up perfectly with the bulldozer operator, the most notable human subject. And yet, although it seems the figure knows it is prominently in view, he appears very relaxed and poised. We don't see the posture of someone unexpectedly caught in the headlights, rushing away and out of a long exposure. This figure seems very stable, with solid legs, and his hands neatly held either behind or in front of his body. He is fully formed, and the boundary around his form is just as distinct and clear as the boundary around the other men. Yet, he alone is fully translucent. Compared to the other men in the background, it also appears his coat is longer closer to his knees, and the shoulder seams may even be a bit peaked. This is a style from times past, not seen in the dress of the other men. It's easy to use our imagination and say he may even stand with a slightly regal posture. One might even say he has a somewhat presidential air. Regardless, the elements in this image go a long way toward proving the truly extraordinary nature of this mysterious figure. And one last thing, the White House is 55,000 square feet with 132 rooms. I discovered from the Truman Library that this photo shows the east view along the south wall of the White House. That means this strange figure just so happens to be standing directly beneath the Lincoln bedroom. I've talked to the experts, I've looked at all the data available in Washington DC, and I have come to the conclusion, in my opinion, this is truly the world's most amazing ghost photograph. To see more incredible images and videos for free, go to joshuapwarren.com.